So, a few weeks ago, we came to the end of the seventh season of My Hero Academia, right as the story was kicking into high gear and we were going to get those final battles. <sighs> it is what it is. And at the very least, at least I can be excited that we're not going to have to deal with the eighth season turning into movies like so many other great anime have done in the last couple of years. Wouldn't that just be the worst way to finish things off? Thankfully, that's not the plan, it seems. We're supposed to get season eight sometime during 2025. In the meantime, though, we're going to be in a bit of a content drought, as most franchises are when they're in the off season. Before I shut the door completely on My Hero Academia until next year, though, I did want to make one last video just talking about the latest season and my thoughts on it as a whole, as opposed to the more piecemeal episode reviews that I did for a couple of months. Obviously, the animation and the music and the voice acting, they're pretty much as they always are. They're very good. Although this season in particular, there were a lot of moments where a character would say something or there'd be this visual that would just make me sit back and think, damn. Beyond that though, we know we're all here for the story. That's what people want for the most part. That's what draws us in. And for me, it's no exception. When I'm watching an anime, the most important element is almost always the narrative and the character arcs. Coming into the most recent season, I think I remember feeling massively excited. After all, we were coming to the true final arc of the show's run. A long one, as it's going to end up taking two seasons to get to the end of it, but regardless, we were there in the penultimate season and rushing towards the end, with the manga itself finally finishing its 10-year run only a few months ago. We have an ending that's being built to, and a lot of payoffs to various different storylines in the pipeline. At the same time, though, does anybody else come into the last one or two seasons of a show with this overhanging feeling of dread that pretty much it'll all be over soon forever? I hate that feeling. It doesn't help that so many of my favourite shows always seem to end within one to two years of each other, and so I have to scramble to fill up my roster again. But despite all of that dread, I was very excited to see the start of a new season, as the sixth season has left off with some pretty interesting plot developments, namely the arrival of the American hero, Star and Stripe, and from reading the manga up to a certain point in that season, I also knew the traitor reveal was on the way, all the way up to the battle with Bakugo and Shigaraki. Beyond that though, I was in the dark of what was going to go down. And even then, I'd been pretty spotty with details as it had been a while since I'd read it, and it was only the one time. I was hyped though, because this season was primed to be wall-to-wall -wall action, with lots of emotional moments and character building. I have to say though, it did start slow for me. I thought Star and Stripe and her battle with Shigaraki was awesome. The actual action and the plot developments that we got over the course of the fight was really grippy and exciting. I really loved how badass they portrayed Star to be, and how she had Shigaraki dead to rights a couple of times, to the point that he needed some absurd plot armor bullshit to escape death again and again particularly with the whole name scenario. And I actually don't mind all of that as well. Sometimes plot armor is immersion breaking and stupid. It can be a sign of poor writing and a failure of the narrative. The author putting their finger on the scale, so to speak. But in this instance, I liked it because it lets you develop this insanely overpowered character like Star, who can be killed off to prevent the battle going too quickly and the other heroes being overshadowed. But at the same time, her character was able to nerf that deeply overpowered villain to the point that the hero team actually had some sort of chance at victory, instead of getting almost immediately stomped and destroyed. So from that point of view, I really enjoyed the sort of Pyrrhic victory that Shigaraki won over Star. My major problem with it though, was that it really did feel like I was supposed to care about this character dying far more than I actually did because she was around for such a small amount of time. The reality is that we never really got to see her do anything other than fight with Shigaraki. So even those flashbacks designed to try to make us care about her and her backstory with All Might and the pilots, for me, it fell a bit flat. I don't know how they could have done it, but I do think this is a character that needed to be introduced to the story earlier in order to have the effect they were looking for. I called it filler when I first watched it, and I was wrong about that, but it did feel rushed on that first watch through, and looking back, I still have that opinion. So it is a majorly hyped start in terms of action and plot development, but it also feels slightly rushed in the emotional sense, because in the end, you don't get that connection and thus the gut punch at her death. Although I do think the fight itself was good enough that I could look past it. The next major story beat followed the long awaited reveal of the UA Trader that was first discussed all the way back in season two and three, and then seemingly dropped out of the story completely. Originally, I just thought the writer had decided to go in another direction with that story, so it was a lot of fun to see it play out at long last. It was great to tie off that loose plot thread. Of course, the character ended up being Ayama, who at first glance seems like a strange choice because he's almost been 100% a comic relief character up to this point in the story. He had a few moments here and there, but nothing too substantial. But when this storyline played out, it was done in such a way that it suddenly added so much depth to his character, whilst also tying back into some of his more important story beats, such as risking everything to try to save his friends at the training camp 
And now we know that if he was discovered, All For One could have just straight up killed his family. So it makes that attack mean more. And then there's also the reveal that he was quirkless and thus his whole connection with Izuku that they had going on where they bonded over their quirks not fitting their bodies with the cheese. All of that makes much more sense. And in a way, they're really two sides of the same coin. They're both quirkless, both outsiders. They're both given quirks by somebody else. But Izuku got lucky. He found the symbol of peace, whilst Ayama was stuck with the symbol of fear. I felt like this storyline played out perfectly. It didn't overstay its welcome. It wrapped up some loose ends, and it set up some future storylines and future character development for all involved. Then, we actually came to the final war. No more prelude, just wall-to-wall battles. Surprise, surprise, but that's fun! Seriously, there were so many great fights and so much story to be told. I think sometimes the actual order that they were showing was a bit weird. Some of the episodes would tease a storyline in the cold open, only to not feature it again that episode, which could be frustrating. But apart from those story editing issues, I think the whole arc is top tier. It's some of my favourite battles in the show's run. And I think we're far enough away from the release of the show to say that it's not really recency bias anymore, is it? Eh, maybe. <laughs> The first of these grand clashes is the Todoroki family's grand finale, starting with Shoto versus Toya and concluding with the Todoroki family stopping Toya from turning himself into a living bomb and incinerating everybody within 5 kilometers or something absurd like that. Both of these phases of the battle were just filled with emotion. Seriously, this is the storyline that was full of the feels and had me on the edge of my seat the whole time. I love how it bled into different parts of the story as well. The reveal of what happened to turn Toya into Darby was not only recounted as the brothers fought each other, but also as a tool by All For One to try to get the best of Endeavor. But in the end, it only stokes his fire even hotter and gets himself burned into a husk. I thought that was really well done. On top of that, having the whole family arrive at the end of the battle to lend their ice and cool him down, yeah, it was a little bit cheesy, but it was also very wholesome. And I really liked that it didn't really work the way you'd expect. They couldn't calm him down. They don't convince him he's wrong because he is ranting to the very end but they merely buy enough time for Shoto to arrive and be able to hit that finishing blow. Like I said, perhaps this was a little bit cheesy at times, but it was really engaging. And I really like that although they won, it's clearly not a happy ending for anybody involved. The family's still massively broken and probably will never heal completely. It's a bittersweet end that feels fitting for an arc that examines the damage of neglect and abuse. And I thought it was really well written and had some of the most moving dialogue in the show. I really enjoyed the flashback to Darby being found by All For One and his final mental breakdown to turn from Toya the Sun into Darby the Serial Killer. It was nice to be able to properly bridge that gap. Alongside all of these happenings, there were also a few minor storylines that just perfectly broke up the big dramatic moments. Although it wasn't really downtime either, because these stories also went very hard. But with the gentle criminal stuff, it was mostly romantic and fluffy and heroic, exciting stuff. It leaves you feeling warm and fuzzy at his redemption and his love for Labrava. For Shoji's arc, it's intense, yes, but it's also really inspirational. He manages to turn the tide of this huge mob, and we also get a lot of his story, which was great, as prior to this, he had to be one of the least developed characters in the whole show, at least from Class 1A's perspective. He was pretty much a nobody, and then out of nowhere, he gets this really deep story about overcoming prejudice and rising above hate to try to make a better world by leading by example. We also got the Gigantomachia vs. Mina conclusion, where she breaks out of that long-term funk to help Kirishima fight back and to get the big fella mind controlled. She's another character from the class that doesn't get a whole heap of focus, so once again it was nice to see, and the storyline was a good palate cleanser for the overarching battles. Then we came to the two massive fights, multiple heroes going head to head against both Shigaraki and All For One. Two separate battlefields and yet both so deeply awesome in every single way. They both had a pretty similar theme overall, the heroes struggle in vain to defeat an opponent who's just too powerful. Both Shigaraki and All For One run the gauntlet and come out on top against their sets of heroes, but I liked how they managed to make these stories feel different despite all of those similarities. In the All For One battle, in every single phase of this fight, it feels like the heroes have a chance. Hawks and Endeavor were working well against All For One, and so he had to use mind games and tactics in order to knock Endeavor out of the fight briefly. But then Jiro and Tokoyami join the fight, and then Endeavor's back up, and they actually win briefly, only for the rewind to happen. Then all the doubles and Darby arrive, but Tokoyami powers up in one of the coolest sequences in the season. Gigantomachia arrives and turns on his master, the wind guy from the other school's there. They're battering him, they're beating him down, they're wearing him out until he has no choice but to unleash his full rage mode to take them all out. But this weakens him. It turned back the clock on him too much, which in turn ties into his fight with All Might. Then on the other side of the coin, you have the Shigaraki fight, which from the moment that Deku is not at the fight, you know as the audience, is unwinnable. 
So the entire time you're sitting there, knowing something bad is about to go down, and you see him slowly, without even using his quirks, just whittle away his enemies again and again. Culminating with that very brief hope spot where Bakugo ascends and powers up to a new level, only to get brutally slapped down and outright killed. Just crushing your hope again. But then they end differently too. Deku arrives and there's suddenly hope. All for one wins, and you lose that hope. I just found that to be very clever. Really, the only story I didn't care much for was Uraraka vs Toga. I thought the ending was interesting with the blood transfusion, but at the same time, I just didn't connect with this story all that much. I know she's a favourite of Manny, but it just wasn't my cup of tea. Thankfully, didn't linger too long, but I just wasn't a fan. Then the season finished off perfectly. That whole armoured All Might fight where he has the battle suit that lets him use the quirks of the Class 1A crew. Oh, I found it so wholesome and beautiful. The old mentor has one last battle that could be his last, but he refuses to just lay down and die. He's determined to fight and win, whilst also showing how far he's come as a mentor. Not just to Deku, but to the whole class. He seemingly figured out the optimal ways that you could use their quirks when fighting all for one. It shows that he's learned from them, that he's grown alongside them, and I just found it deeply wholesome. And I gotta say, I was mega salty when they ended on this cliffhanger battle, but I guess it makes sense. You want something huge to start off the next season. It makes a lot of sense, actually. I just wish it was coming out now, you get me? So yeah, not really much else to say beyond that. This season was legitimately amazing. I really loved it overall. A couple of minor quibbles here and there, but nothing that even slightly dampened the enjoyment. I'm really not ready for this show to be over. Ugh. Hope they animate the spin-off. And so with all that being said, these have been my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of My Hero Academia Season 7? Did you like it? Hate it? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know.